All right, welcome to the channel, everyone. If you're watching this video, that is because you are a beginner MailChimp user and you want to familiarize yourself a bit more with how MailChimp works, figure out how to create audiences and send out campaigns, etc. If you are more familiar with MailChimp, this may be a bit below what you already know, so you might be able to skip over it. However, definitely check the links in the description where we do have other videos where we talk about making sense of your campaign analytics, setting up automations, and some other cool features that MailChimp has. Also, for your beginners, check those out after you watch this video and are familiar with the platform. So once you head over to MailChimp.com and set up your account, this is what you're going to see. And this is just our home screen slash dashboard. So on this home screen, there's just a bunch of analytical stuff that they're going to show you, kind of an overview and 30 second summary. Don't worry about this. We're going to cover this in the video that's linked below where we talk about analytics. Now. What's new about MailChimp here as of fall of 2020 is we have this really easy to navigate action bar on the left. This is where we can either create new campaigns, look at our audience, see our campaigns, look at our automations, build websites slash landing pages, content studio, integrations, and search. And then down at the bottom, if you need to change any account settings, you're going to click on the account down here on the left hand side. This is where you can change your payment plan if you want to upgrade to a paid version. Now MailChimp does have a very strong free version as well. Or if you need to change things like your domain, um, authenticate or verify your domain, etc. And we will get into that a little bit later in the video. So we're going to start with adding contacts. Of course, you're using this to send out some email blasts or create automations, but it's all pointless if you don't have any contacts in your MailChimp account. So what we will do is we'll click on the first option in our action bar, which says audience. Now, once we click that, we'll be brought to our audience page. Here we can see our different audiences that we have. Now, do keep in mind with the free version, you can only have one audience. You do have to have a paid version to have multiple audiences. Now, this is important to note because let's say you have a marketing list as well as a customer list and you want to blast those lists separately, you're going to have to have a paid account in order to create those two lists. If you're using this just for marketing to, let's say, a newsletter or leads or something like that, then you can usually get away with just having the free account. About half of my clients currently use the free account and the other half use the paid account based on their needs. Now, in order to create a new audience, you'll click Manage Audiences, you'll go to View Audiences, and at the top, there should be a button that says Create Audience. So we'll click on Create Audience, click Create Audience here again, and this is where we put our audience name. So I'll just put test. Our default from address, this is the address that you want to be the email to be coming from. So if I want to do mark at mark.com, of course I don't actually own mark.com, but this is what people would see when I send them an email. It would say that it came from mark at mark.com and the default from name is the same thing. I'd put my name. So in summation, it would say that if I was to email my test audience, it would say it was from Mark Cloutier and the reply email or from email would be mark at mark.com. Now, there aren't really many other settings we need to worry about. However, we do need to fill this in here where it says remind people how they signed up to your audience. So this is something basically you can just say um, you, or you could even put something as simple as newsletter or you signed up for the newsletter on my website or you filled out a lead form or you signed up for this, whatever it might be. Now, we're not going to worry about these settings, obviously, notifications if you want to receive a daily summary or one by one. So we're not going to worry about that. We're going to click save. And now we have our test audience. But as we can see, our test audience has zero subscribers, so we need to add contacts. So we're going to go ahead and click on the add contacts. And there's two ways we can do this. If you have, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, whatever contacts, you can go ahead and add a subscriber or as they come in, you need to manually add them. You can just put in their email address and their name, whatever other uh, information you want to put here and add them one by one. It's important that you click that this person gave me permission to email them. MailChimp will not allow you to add them if you do not click that. Now, this is important because you can't just go and find people's emails on the web and paste them in and start spamming them. They need to have opted in or given you permission in some way, shape, or form. The easiest way is if they opted in on a lead page or a newsletter, sign up, etc. So what we'll then do is click subscribe. Of course, it's probably not going to let me subscribe because I didn't put in any information, which is great. So if you are missing 
um, important information, then it will actually let you know. Now, the other way to import contacts and probably the easier way is to bulk upload. Now, this is going to be if you already have an email list. So if I start working with a client and they have a list of 2000 email addresses and contacts, they want to start blasting. I obviously don't have the time or anyone on my team to go ahead and manually add 2000 people one by one. So we'll click on import contacts. And from here, we can either upload a CSV or a TXT file and they need to be labeled correctly. They will tell you how to label it. Or the easiest way is usually just to click copy and paste. And then you can just copy and paste names and email addresses and any other info. Once you go to continue to organize, it will tell you to match the right fields to the right, uh, to the name, email address, address, etc. And you'll simply go ahead and click to upload it. And it, depending on the size of the list, it might take 30 seconds, it might take a few minutes, and they'll let you know when it's done by email, as well as notification on your dashboard. And you'll have your list. So once we have our list, we need to know how to send an email to that list. So we're going to talk about sending an email blast to our list. So what we want to do is we can either click create right here and click on email, or we can go to campaigns. But we're going to go over this a bit more when I show you how to actually look at your past campaigns. So we'll click create. We will select that we want to send out an email. And then we have a few options, regular, automated, plain text, AB text. So automated, if you want to link this up to your website, so when someone subscribes automatically, it sends them a welcome email, you can do that. Or if you have their birthday, for example, in their contact information, you can automate a happy birthday email. For now, we'll go with regular campaign name. This is for internal use only. So only you and anyone who's logged into your MailChimp account will see your campaign name. Typically, I'll do something like the date or I'll do something like the product. So today is October 19th, 2020. So we'll do 10, 19, 2020. And then I'll put test just so I know to delete this when I'm done. And then we'll click begin. So it's going to load up and we have a few things we need to fill out. So first is two. We need to add recipients. We're going to choose which audience. So I just created test audience. So if I wanted to send it to test, I would click test. So we'll go ahead and click test. We can choose if we want to send it to all subscribers. Yes, we'll click save. Now it's going to note that, hey, you have no subscribers. You can't send to no subscribers. So obviously, if you have at least one subscriber, you're not going to have to worry about that. From. So this is going to be if you want to edit that from email and address that you put in when you created the audience. So we have that it's sending from Mark Cloutier at Mark at Mark.com. If you wanted to change this, you can do so right here. So we'll go ahead and cancel that subject. This is where you're going to put in your subject line. Now, one cool thing about the MailChimp paid account, and I am on a paid account right now, they actually give you kind of helpful tips as you're writing your subject. So for this, we'll do test, and it will actually tell you, hey, this is short, hey, add some emojis, space is limited, that's impressive, all this different stuff. And you can actually go ahead and put emojis in right here if you would like. Do keep in mind that some browsers will not display emojis and they'll show up as weird little icons, um, especially if you're emailing something like a school or a company that might have a firewall put up. Well, emojis can be a bit risky because it might look a bit funky. Preview text. Now the preview text is what's going to show directly below your uh, subject line. It's not required, but it can help with those open rates. So obviously when we're putting in our subject line, we want to think what's going to get people to actually open our email and the preview text can help us even more. So if you've ever received an email and underneath the email where you can see like one quick sentence and it kind of piques your interest a little more, but then you go and open the email and that sentence even isn't even there, that is preview text. So this preview text will not actually show up in the body of the email unless you add it there again separately. So we'll click save. And then we go to actually design our email. So this is where we get into actually creating what the email is going to look like. Now we can choose from a few different layouts. So they give us these base layouts. We can look at different themes. We can look at save templates. You can actually create your own. You can code your own, which you're probably not going to do if you're a beginner or you can look at past campaigns that you've already used. So let's look at a past campaign that we've already sent. 
So if I was to click this, it's going to bring me into my designer where I can go ahead and actually design my email. So it's super simple. And as you can see, this is a really simple email. So if I go ahead and delete everything, and then I want to bring that back, all I have to do is click image over here on the right and click and drag it on top. And then I can either go to, I can go to upload image. It will show me all of my images that I have, or I can click upload in the top right, to upload a fresh image. So if I want to paste this in, I just click it and click insert. If I want to change the text, I just click on the pencil. Well, let's delete it to show you how to add fresh text. So now all we have to do is click text, drop it in right here, and it will open up our editing bar. If I click save and close and I want to re-edit, I click the pencil. If I want to delete anything, I click the delete. If I want to duplicate it, I simply click that plus button right there. So let's go ahead and edit this text. We can simply type in whatever we want right here. We'll put a bunch of gibberish. We can change the size. We can change the color. We can bold, we can italicize, we can underline, we can hyperlink. We can change the font. We can change the alignment. So a lot of different stuff we can do here. Pretty much all the basic text stuff that you would expect. So nothing too crazy, but it's really simple and easy to use. Now buttons, let's delete this button. If you want to add in a button and actually link people to a product, we simply click and drag the button over. We click the pencil. We can change the text to um, you know, buy now. We could put in a web address. Or we can actually have it linked to an email address, an anchor link, or a file. So if you want to send someone an automatic download like they opted into a gated asset on your website and you're sending them a free download, you could link it to a file as well. We'll click save. Actually, let's go back and look at the style. We can change how rounded the corners are. We can change if there's a border. We can change the color right here. Also, if you have custom color codes, you can paste those in. Text, um, font, spacing, size, padding, etc. So really easy to actually go ahead and create campaigns. Once we've created our campaign, what we would then do is click continue. We could send a test email. So if you want to send a test email to yourself or a client to see if it looks right and functions right, you can do that. Or you can simply preview it right here and test out the functionality and look of everything. Um, then if you want to finish it you would, or send it out, you would actually go ahead and click send if you wanted to send it right away. And it will tell you that it will start sending. They're grayed out because I have no subscribers and I don't want to send this on behalf of my client to anybody. If you have a paid account, you can choose to schedule it. So let's say you want to send out your campaign at noon the following day. You could go ahead and select the day and time that you want to and it will automatically send. If you want to come back and finish later, just click finish later right here. So now that we know how to add contacts and go ahead and create a campaign, what we can now do is if we want to go back and see our campaigns that we've run, we would simply go to our action bar on the left and click campaigns. Now, this is where we can sort through everything that we've sent by list. So this is the test list. It's just got this one campaign. If I want to delete this campaign, I simply select it. I click delete and then you type in in all caps the word delete and click delete. Now, if I go over to our main list here, we can actually see the campaigns that we have sent in the past. As you can see, I have them labeled by date. And we have this one right here that is scheduled for tomorrow. Today's October 20th, 2020, and this is scheduled for tomorrow. I do this because I actually create the campaign a day in advance, and then I send it to my clients for approval, and then we schedule it to send automatically the next day. So we can see here all the campaigns we've sent, and we can see automatically our open rate and our click-through rate. If we hover over it, it will show the exact number. Now, an average open rate across all industries is about 15 to 20%. Now, some industries that may vary, again, that is an average across all industries for all emails. So this is actually the lighting manufacturing industry. So typically these would be a lot lower. So we're above the, you know, the national average across industries and we're way above the average for the lighting industry. Now clicks, same thing, clicks, average click through rate is about 2% to 2.5%. So we're right on here to above with some of our, or with most of our emails. This one right here is gonna be 0.1 because there was actually no call to action or anything clickable. Someone probably clicked on 
the website or something like that. We didn't have a CTA for that particular campaign. So this is where we can see kind of an overall synopsis of how our campaigns have done. If we want to get a bit more in depth, we would click on view report and we will actually get into that a bit more in the video that is linked down below where we get more in depth on analytics. However, if we click view report, it'll just bring us to this report page right here, which we will explore a bit further in a future video. Now, the final thing we're gonna cover here is authenticating your domain. So you know how to add contacts, you know how to create emails and send them out, but one thing that's really important is actually to authenticate your domain. Now, this means that you should have a lot less trouble um, actually going in and or you should have all this trouble with firewalls, I should say. So automatically when you use something like MailChimp, what happens is it sends from MailChimp servers. So if your email is mark.com, it will automatically send from something like mark.com.mailchimp.com. And this can oftentimes trigger a lot of firewalls and it might work for a few months. Like for this client, for example, Daylight, we hadn't actually authenticated the domain right away. And about six months in, the email stopped going to our clients. And we were like, what's going on? And we actually had to go ahead and realize, oh, we, we didn't authenticate the domain. We need to always make sure we authenticate and verify domains. So we'll actually send from our domain. So instead of mark at mark.com.mailchimp.com, it would just send from mark.com. Now, if you are working for a client or if your business has strong domain authority and you don't want to mess with wrecking that, you can create a second domain. So this main this client's main website is daylight.com, but we elected to send the emails from hellodaylight.com just to make sure if anyone does report anything as spam or if there's any abuse complaints that our main domain, daylight.com, the integrity of that domain will never be at risk because we have this shell domain right here. So what you wanna do is go ahead and go to account, go to or click on your little button down here, go to account, go to settings, and go to domains. And under domains, you will see verify email domain. This one's really quick. Um, you're just gonna go ahead and verify it. And if you have an email at your domain, you're gonna put that in and just click a button. Now, the next thing you need to do is actually connect slash authenticate your domain right here. And that means you're gonna to have to go into your DNS records. So if you're on GoDaddy or wherever you bought your domain, you just need to go into your DNS. They give you step-by-step -step instructions, copy and text the TXT file and the CNAME file right in there and save it. And you will be all set and good to go. So this is the basics beginner's guide to MailChimp. Everything a beginner needs to know about creating an audience, um, sending out email blasts and authenticating domains. By now, you should have a basic grasp of how to use this tool. Again, there are links down in the description where you can learn more about analytics and automations and some more advanced ways to use MailChimp for your business. We also have a link where if you're interested in learning more about MailChimp and Facebook ads and website strategy and design, Google ads, YouTube ads, etc., we have a link where we have a huge library of training videos and tutorials on everything you need to know about growing your business online. You can check that out at the link down below for the real deal online marketer.com. As always, if you have any questions, my email is also linked below. Feel free to email me any questions or drop them in the comments and we'll get you an answer. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you found it helpful, please do like the video or consider subscribing to the channel. Lots more content to come, and we appreciate you all and wish you the best of luck in your business endeavors.